Now let's proceed as follows. I'm going to introduce the moderator to you, and then the moderator will take over. Mrs. Bauer, you are our moderator once again today. Thanks very much for being here. We enjoy having you here on the issue of distribution and online activities. You're one of the specialists in Europe. You're a very renowned expert in the field of online distribution. You've got your own company where you serve your clients, therefore you know all the ins and outs of the business. Mrs. Brauer likes to set priorities and we hope that we'll continue to do so in the course of today's panel discussion. Here we are going to talk about OTAs and hotel websites. Who's more powerful? And I hope that you will enjoy the following discussion. Thank you so much and welcome. We are delighted to be here. The issue on our agenda is extremely interesting. Online distribution, how much business does your website generate? In the previous, in the preparatory discussion, we said, well, this is a market where growth can be generated, but you've got to do it right, and we are facing tremendous challenge. We have got a renowned group of experts with us in this room with which we want to enter into a detailed discussion. What are you going to do with regards to pricing? What is happening in the hotel sector? Let's start off with Mrs. Susanne Weiss. Since 2007, she's been responsible for 130 ring hotels. Dr. Friesen is with us here as well. He acts as a consultant. He consults companies working in the tourism sector. These are not necessarily hotels, but also airlines. He provides consultation services with regards to pricing, so that's also extremely intriguing. Mr. Paihan came here all the way from America. He didn't want me to tell you the story, but he works for Marriott International with 4,000 houses and 900 brands. So he acts as a senior consultant. It's always difficult not to use the American terms in German. Senior Director Global E-Commerce Channels is the title. Now, remember, senior, but it has nothing to do with my age. No, most definitely not. Mr. Buller is also here with us. He's an expert in the field of online distribution. He knows the dot-com world very well. He's responsible for Holiday Check, the nine largest portals in Germany with more than 300 billion turnover. So a group which serves hotels, but not only hotels. But you're also responsible for other areas where we can learn from each other, which was particularly interesting to us. Now, we've got 60 minutes, at the end of which you are allowed to ask questions. Let's start, let's start off with an integrity state away. Let's focus on the hotel brand, first of all, because we want to get into the right swing. Distribution and mix. What does it mean? Germany-wide and at global scale. What? is the distribution mix all about when we speak about OTR versus your own home page or versus eyes? What are the secrets you can reveal to us? Of course, I'm not going to present the facts and figures to you, but I'm only going to give you percentages. Since 2007, we have observed that, well, in 2010, we still had a voice percentage of Central reservations amounting to 10%, which has dropped to 3 or 4% now in the course of time. These are very special cases of clients who want to contact a certain person when they want to make a central reservation. At the current moment, the distribution mix at headquarters amounts to approximately 80% of online distribution and 20% of direct contacts. Of course, it looks different in our different branches. We've got some branches where business travelers are much more represented here. We have a mix of 70 or 80 percent. In other branches, one of our branches is still not online at all because the hotel operator is afraid of going online. That works as well, but nonetheless, he has a full capacity of 96 percent all year round. It only works via the telephone. You've got to call the person. But the question is, what do the clients want? Well, there are major differences, of course. But I hold the view that this is a development which cannot be stopped any longer, even hotels which are located in remote areas. Well, a couple of years ago, I delivered a presentation at uh, ITB when I spoke about Hersbruck, Pommelsbrunn, Uckersberg. Well, don't worry if you don't know where that place is. It doesn't matter. Here we've got a mix of 50 or 60 percent of online reservations. As also, there's not that much of a difference. Mr. Pehan, 
Well, with regards to merit, the situation is rather similar. Of course, we are in a very good starting position because we've got our own distribution channels. So it varies a bit from continent to continent, but on average, at global level, we've got 45 to 50 percent of our distribution via Merit.com and our global websites or via smartphones and tablets. The GDS sector is still very important for us with regards to our hotels. At Marius, this is also based on the strong corporate market, which accounts for 25% of our business. But also, the call sector is very important at Marriott, which also amounts to 25 to 30%. We receive 30% of our reservations via the call centers. This has a lot to do with customer loyalty programs, marriage awards. Many clients enjoy giving us a phone call, and we gladly accept that. And, you know, the conversion rate via the call center is much higher than it is via our distribution channels. Our clients who call our call center lead to a convergence rate of 40 percent. And in the online sector, this is much lower. But what's particularly near and dear and significant to us is not only the mix between Marriott.com and Hotel Direct or the call center or GDS and UTEs, but the most important matrix to us is the percentage of clients going online via Marriott.com. This amounts to 75 or 80 percent of our online reservations. Here, reservations are made via online contacts, and this is a very important factor. We want to keep that percentage stagnant. Can this only be achieved if you have a strong brand? Mr. Bulla, can this only be achieved by a brand such as Marriott or maybe also smaller brands such as the Ring Hotels? I think the bigger brands such as Marriott, Aqua and others are in a major advantage because they can make investments jointly and row their marketing strategy out much more effectively and efficiently. In conventional hotels, you normally find medium-sized companies which have greater difficulties because here every individual hotel has to develop its own web competence, and that's sometimes a bit more difficult. Expedia, Oporto, HRS have been doing that for years. They have established a brand to market hotels. They have invested a lot of money. Expedia spends 45 percent of its income on marketing in order to strengthen its presence. You know, set up a tour reservation office in a small road. That's very difficult. Here, it's very difficult to do business. Do you have a distribution mix in other areas as well? How about airlines? How about voicemail or online reservations? I think with regards to the European airlines that I'm familiar with in Europe, would dream of such online reservation figures. I think they are far below an online share of 50 percent concerning their own web website as a distribution channel. In rather general terms, it is true to say that I don't think that the difference between hotels and other sectors in the tourism industry is that big. You don't really find for clients via different distribution challenges, but megatrends such as globalization and industrialization and technology lead to a change client behavior. You know, during the preparatory session, I already mentioned of the fact that in Germany, clients are very much aware of the price. They look at the price more than anything else. But that is not only true for our clients, but also the hotel sector. Hotels try to use the price as a unique selling position. This is different with airlines. Well, here, with regards to airlines, the possibility to, to differentiate yourself from others is easier. With regards to hotels, the products are being viewed more as a commodity. But, you know, with different rules, you can come up with the right package. What I have observed from a client's perspective is that some hotels which classify themselves as a premium hotel with five stars or more when they're in a situation of dire straits they cut prices and here you know clients get used to low prices which is a difficulty you know if the reduced price becomes the normal price then you end up in great difficulties just look at DIY chains in Germany they too cut prices all the time and this was of no help at all the clients 
if they look at a hotel chain such as Marriott, which is really powerful in the market, and if you reduce prices, then implicitly you trigger off a race to the bottom, which is not really what we want. So focusing on pricing only is not really efficient. I think it would be desirable to have more arguments that we can use in order to market our products apart from prices, but there is an overcapacity, which is also true for other sectors, yeah, but the market is also very transparent, which is one of the problems. If you cannot really differentiate yourself by saying, well, room A is much more beautiful than room B, people focus on prices only and exclusively, and prices are transparent. And if there is no possibility to differentiate yourself, you run into great trouble. Yeah, but sometimes you cannot really show everything you have because you can only show five pictures, for example. And this makes the whole thing quite difficult. But if you go to an OTA, if you use your marketing power or your money, or if you establish your own website, these are totally different things of going about it. Oh, how can you do the splits? How can you find the right balance? How do I influence my distribution channels? How about the chances to distribute and market your own brand via different distribution channels? Of course, a strong brand such as Marriott has it much easier than others. I mean, for Marriott, it's much easier compared to Ring Hotels. You know, we've got 130 hotels, and Marriott has got four and a half thousand. So, you know, we don't have a stronger market force, you know, and we don't have as much money. But the most important prehab problem that we have in the hotel sector, which needs to be approached from Marriott from a different angle, and this problem has been resolved by Marriott in a different fashion, but many consultants in Germany still haven't resolved the problem. But there is sometimes no price strategy available at all. And if your price strategy means that you don't have one, it is quite difficulty. It's quite difficult. And this is what transparency is all about. You know, this has led to in, an entire chaos. What does a hotel have to offer? If you go by prices only, the clients do not know what the extra or the, the added value might be all about. You know, a three-star hotel might be like this or like that. That's what clients always imagine. A couple of years ago, I listened to a very interesting presentation on how people can be made aware of an air conditioning system in the car or a piece of butter. Some of the clients do not really know how to appreciate these products any longer. And sometimes they don't really have an idea of what a three or four star hotel might cost. We destroy the entire market situation ourselves. There are many hotels, luckily fewer and fewer, but there are still some hotels around where the clients can actually see where the added value lies. These are quite intelligent solutions, by the way. It doesn't help to say, well, let's go for pricing only. Let's look up at what our competitors are doing early in the morning and then reduce prices in order to sell our hotel rooms, that is not the appropriate strategy because, you know, there's more than just pricing to it in order to sell your hotel rooms. So it is important to present yourself appropriately, not only in the net, but you've got to develop the right strategy. If you don't have the right strategy, you do not have to be surprised that you do not get anything tangible out of it at the end of the day. What's very important is that you need to have the right strategy for discussions. If we have 75 to 80 percent of our online distribution channels through different channels, this does not happen randomly. But there is a strategy underlying the whole process. And here a company or every single hotel has got to set its own strategic priorities. You have to have the right discussion strate strategy. What do you want to do? What do you not want to do? That needs to be specified. Of course, we want all our clients to use our own distribution channels, but in real world, this doesn't really work. So you need certain distributions to a certain extent. But what's most important is that each and every hotel and hotel owner define how incremental certain business activities are going through different channels. So therefore, for a couple of years, we've had a very selective strategy for third-party distribution channels. Third distribution channels are partnerships. Is that what you mean? Well, it's the OTAs, it's the travel agencies and chains of travel agencies, every third distribution channel, to put it that way. But you don't have to co cooperate with each and every one. Not each distribution channel is 
worth the same. Not each distribution channel generates the same incremental turnover. It's very important that you define for yourself which distribution channels are not really recommendable for hotel change or individual hotels. And it's quite clear that we are very critical towards peers' websites. If we have a clear marketing strategy, our own promotion, we use our own distribution channels and invite our discussion partners to disseminate this marketing strategy even further. Loyalty is of the essence. The higher the level of loyalty, the higher the loyalty to a certain distribution channel, to Marriott.com, for example. This gives us an opportunity to offer the client something which is unique, something that no one else can offer. This is how you can create customer loyalty to the hotel and to the distribution channel, which is very important. An additional point is worth mentioning, marketing. We as hotel operators know our business well. We know the demand, we know the market, we know what our clients want. And since we know that, we can optimize our online search channels. And for certain periods of time, we can increase our share of voice in these search engines before anybody else comes along and enters the markets or takes a market share away from us or might search via Google but end up in a different channel. Do you need a specific system for that matter? Of course, you have to have the right strategy, but in order to implement what you want to achieve with regards to pricing, what else is required? Or what do you need with regards to forecasts? Or what will your market be? And what will your pickup rate be? Or can this be achieved also without a system? Now, let me ask the two not hotel operators. We've got very little to do with pricing. Our products are delivered to us. But what's your feeling? Well. When I look at the hotels and the pictures that they show of them, I'm wondering who will book a hotel room under such conditions. You know, we talk about the assessment and devaluation, and in the hotel sector, people always say, well, this is a rather critical affair. When clients rate us, wow, that's rather difficult. In the past, you found an evaluation sheet in the hotel room, but nobody filled it in. But if we ask our clients, well, what is most important when you book a hotel room, they talk about the prices. But of course, it's the price benefit ratio, value for money. That's what it all boils down to at the end of the day. The question is, how is the hotel being evaluated? Are there specific pieces of information on the hotel? And what are the pictures like? Well, this is part of the strategy. Evaluation, content, is it topical? Is it inviting? Does it look nice? Is that part of the strategy, the price? No, that's what the brand is all about. It's not only logo, but it's a promise. There is no point in showing beautiful pictures of the hotel only, and then the client comes along and everything looks completely different. But you know, sometimes you see pictures and think that the hotel stands alone somewhere in a beautiful landscape. But once you get there, you realize that it's right beside a supermarket. You know, the brand includes much more. It's a promise that needs to be fulfilled. I'd fully subscribe to that point of view. You know, Marriott is a tangible brand with transparent prices, but an additional piece of information on prices. Either in the field of pricing, you look at what your competitors are doing, and this is what many do in the hotel sector, because there is a high level of price transparency. The clients want to be able to be to draw comparisons. Second aspect is that you've got to focus on costs. This has something to do with the distribution channel. What does the distribution channel cost? Do you have your own website? That's the second point which needs to be figured in as the lowest possible price. And the high art of the hotel business where I've got a lot of good experience is the value-based price. What are the clients willing to pay? Or certain groups of clients are willing to pay? You've got to know that because neither your competitors are going to pay for your costs nor anybody else. You know, in many transport and tourism industries, pricing managers get confused if they do exist at all. They focus on cutting price only without zooming in on the performance, but that's what the clients pay for. They need to be able to recognize that there is an added value. You know, you spoke about the automotive industry. That's where this works beautifully. Now, we buy security packages worth 5,000 euros, and we don't ask 
as whether it's really worth it or not. They're simply doing it. The same happens in the field of airlines with the introduction of branded fares. For certain groups of clients, certain price categories are being introduced. And I think here in the hotel sector, much more can be achieved. You've got a whole plethora of different services and prices, but that only leads to the confused customer. The customer who's confused is not willing to buy. Yeah, in addition to that, different price categories, we've got different categories of hotel rooms. That is what we all appreciate, and we want to offer that, but that's too much for the client. You know, it's much easier to buy a seat on an airline, on an airplane, but you know what you get, but it's much more difficult. In the hotel sector, there are so many bits and pieces. I think that's contradictory. I think it's even much more difficult in our branch, but you just don't realize what it's all about. But certain many different categories of prices and classes have been developed by the airlines and they change on an hourly basis. But here it's different. And of course, this happens automatically in contrast to the hotel sector where, of course, you might say, well, I developed my forecast. I know how things worked during the last year. And this is a lot of high tech which is involved. Maybe don't go about it in the same fashion. Maybe they don't have the time. And you are saying this also includes distribution cost. Now, the rate parity changes. And how much does a certain business sector cost? You also need to know where costs can be reduced, because for each and every hotel, this is quite expensive. What strikes me is that the hotel sector really complained that they're being put under pressure by the big ones. And they said, well, we want to have equal prices, fair prices, but this system was undermined, and it will be interesting to see what's going to happen, who will be offered which price in which particular period of time, and which happens on my own website. You know, there were a lot of disputes going on in the hotel sector, and it will be interesting to see what the result will be at the end of the day. But I think cuts prices will be cut even further. Oh, and a Freiheit. <laughs> Yes, we have to get used to this freedom. Well, let's wait and see. Uh, there's certainly this danger, I agree with you, because uh, very often we use the rate um, as a USP and not what we offer in addition. Well, I think we should focus more on the demand and the need of the customer. We want to offer a service or a room which uh, the guest might not forget, and we want to promote customer loyalty. I agree with you that the individual hotel owner operator has more freedom and c customers benefit because there's more transparency and they compare rates better. And this artificial uh, rate um, level, which was introduced artificially by HRS and others, will erode because some of us will start to um, erode the rate which triggers an automatism, which is not beneficial to more transparency. Well, it's we are counteracting already. The hotel business, unfortunately, has lost the dominance um, rates, and the meter search engines have shown this. And that is why most customers do no longer believe in guest best rates guarantees, because you just have to look at a meter search engine and look, and you find 15 channels with 15 different rates, and most of the rates are no longer offered by the hotel itself. And that's the weakest point, especially in Germany. Um, hotels need to dominate rates again. They need to control their distribution partners better, which will raise confidence among consumers that you get best rates on the hotel's website. Nobody believes it at the moment. Just look at the meter search engine, and then it's clear that it's not the case. And things are even more difficult because I see again and again I have this less in the chain because usually you have less complexity. Before I joined Ring Hotels, it was easier. But um, private hotel owners, and they should learn this, um, they can't do it simple, but customers want to have a simple. If you give a hotel the opportunity to present things they believe, they need to present more and more and more. And the result is that customers read pages of descriptions. I am absolutely agree with you. And then customers say, it's too complicated. I simply won't do this. 
um, simple sales, that is what sells. And even if it's more expensive um, compared to something much nicer, we tried a product which failed awfully to introduce a cool thing because and the hotel owner said it's far too simple. Nobody wants it. People don't feel that they're taken seriously and said, no, it was just simple. It was a coffee mug um, which customers could buy. And when they stayed a night, they got filled with coffee, quite simple. And hotel owners don't dare to sell it because they're afraid if we tell this it's too simple. If it's too simple, we need to add something. And I stopped it because it didn't make sense. And that is why it's important to have an exchange with other sectors. What do customers want? What do they want from Zalanda, Amazon, Lufthansa? How do people shop? What is really beautiful? What is really a nice experience? And what do they think they don't need? When it comes to hotels, during the week, straightforward business, wireless LAN, um, business suite, etc. And then weekend hotel is ambling. Then we should focus on art, culture, city tours. And a lot of hotels, because we cannot afford, I close my hotel um, Saturday and Sundays. So most business hotels can't afford this. So I have to have a dual strategy, which makes the home page a bit more complicated. And business customer goes to the OTS because I just need four clicks. This it just takes 50 seconds. And on the hotel website, it's a bit more complex. Well, it appears that those who do the online business, that is automatic. They just sit there and press the button on their survey, and then they make the money. The work done by an OTA is underestimated, and that I would recommend to look into it and to find out how difficult it is. And the discussion which we have in the hotel business that, um, well, there is um, blackmailing, but it's hard work. And what HRS um, achieved was they created additional benefits, not that the other websites are so bad, but their website is so good and their service is so good. And who creates added value will get business. That is market economy. I'm with you. It's not possible without partnerships and booking and Expedia, I think, are a good thing to have. But I think that these OTAs, through their market power and their funds, which is also to a large extent funded by the hotel business, not by hotel business, they get a fee. To f um, they wisely invest their money. It's better, isn't it? They wisely invest their money and find customers before we do it. We in the hotel business are a bit far behind. But the hotel business is to be blamed. Um, we should be very honest about it, um, be it Marriott, Ring Hotels, Best Western. Very often, we can't offer this added value because customers use Booking, Expedia, HRS, and can have an overview on the whole market. We can't offer it. We only have um, a couple of hotels per city and not 300. But customers want to have a huge variety. But what is the added value we can offer to our customers that no other can? And we need to find this niche market, be it customer loyalty, services, you name it. And we don't need to compete with OTAs. We should compete with customers who booked through OTA or through a travel agent or a booking tool or maybe through call center. When he enters the hotel, we should provide a service that is impressive, that customer becomes not only loyal to the hotel, but also to the booking channel. And that is what the hotel sector should do. And it hasn't got anything to do with having more money, marketing money or not. I think it's a very dangerous development, isn't it? So we are considered as competitors and the pricing discussion and added value to get customers. So we should compare rates, but customers should book directly. We see a similar development in the airline business. 
which is not even paying um, fees. So please offer the uh, offer the service, but it, when it gets difficult, you uh, um, might do this, but leave the rest of the business with us. Um, well, first we're on equal footing. If we're bad, we won't sell anything. If you're better, you will sell yourself. But please establish a, playing, a, a level playing field. Ten years ago, we seen this with the classic operators. They discovered the internet. Well, there's the internet. Where can we do the business on ourse ourselves? And we don't need any distribution channels. And they kicked out the distribution channel, and then they realized it's not that easy. I think we should have a partnership approach. I understand the concerns and difficulties of hotels, and I understand the rate discussion. Everybody should be happy in a distribution channel, and both should ha find a fair way in dealing with each other. And it's difficult if you have a discussion and then um, Mr. Block, who has um, pages of ads, instead of talking to each other, what's your problem? Can I help you? How can we do this in a fair manner? And hardly ever we have this discussion, then there is a fight. I won't sell you, and I don't give you any contingency. At the end of the day, nobody sells anything. Well. I think there are these interdependencies which are good. A partnership approach is certainly valuable. But if you see the development of hotel rates in Germany compared to the rest of Europe or the rest of the world, well, we are at the bottom, unfortunately. What we pay here for a three-star hotel or for a five-star five hotel, for a five-star hotel, you, couldn't, you don't even get a three-star hotel in London. Well, there are challenges, also great opportunities, but challenges, distribution, distribution, TDS, own website, and it costs an awful lot of money, which is certainly right, but you need to earn this money. And as I think as the rates are so low, the a share of what you pay is quite high. And how will rates develop in 2014? I think the beginning was quite good. The rates in Germany, was well, there still room f for improvement to, to the top, my, my greatest success in this context was there's one hotel owner whom I've told um, for five years you have 80% um, of coverage, so um, you should raise your rates, but he's not doing it. I don't even need a strategy. But you're certainly too cheap when for four years um, he added 50 euro cents and um, he was so afraid of losing us. I don't know what happened last year. End of last year he did to increase his rates by 25 percent. He certainly has Dr. Friesen. Well, and he, he didn't even tell me and you just see it. And then I talked to him and he hadn't lost a single customer. And well, he said, well, I was so st stupid. And I thought I was the most expensive in this area. And I have to um, ask you the most expensive. You can be m even more expensive. You will still be the most expensive. And I calcul calculated that in the past five years, not increasing his rate, he had lost half a hotel. So we will probably never do keep the, his, his rate. And I hope um, he will be a role model. It was a very confident communication. We are good, and um, that is why we can increase it. And his guests increased, and he got new guests. And these were guests did, which he, whom he didn't have before, who consume more in a hotel. I think we are not courageous enough. We're too coward. The hotel business would say, OK, very confidentially, we have a good service that we offer which is excellent, which has its rate, and I ask for this rate, uh, which, however, means that I have staff which are also that self-confidence. And my, what I tell the hotel owners, but if the uh, uh, woman at the reception has just um, started to work who earns 1,200 euros, shall I stop talking so you can say something? 
And the girl, I'm sorry, but this girl, which earns 1,200 net for her, whom um, um, 80 euros or 100 euros for a hotel is xenophobic. And then if um, a CEO of a tax company says, well, it was red face, I didn't want to buy your hotel, and then um, says, well, give or leave. But what we have to train your employees, you need good staff who need to be trained and they need to have the respective skills, um, which we also lack in this sector. They are afraid and then they break down and then you can't implement your pricing strategy. I think you should have very honest and clear products and a brand as a promise with respect to the quality and um, features of your product. And we are um, in the service sector, and you can only evaluate a service if two people together provide a service. And um, we adapt marketing to a product which appears to be a bed or a room, but not on the service. And that should be our focus. People should pay for the service provided publicly. Would you have this, um, if you have a good review and people say, well, I will raise my rates because people love me, would this be an idea? I think yes. Yesterday we discussed it at a different occasion that reviews can be translated into m m rates. Money needs some time, a critical mass you need, but I think it's certainly an option. What you mean is that price sends a quality signal, that customers perceive that the room has a certain value and is ready to pay the rate. This is, requires the understanding of or requires an understanding of customer segments and the readiness to pay, which is something a lot of a lot ignore. And the, with respect to the general development of, of rates, which hotel owners can do, of course, the benchmarks um, are linked to cycles. Usually it's an indicator in hindsight, which depends on exchange rate, geopolitical situation. If you think of Ukraine, for example, development of the economy, and we've seen this very impressively after the financial crisis. I think the pre-level, uh, pre-crisis level has not been reached in many countries, almost just about. So you can't do anything about it um, if you own a hotel. There are studies which prove that with good reviews, can, you can certainly get a higher rate. It's a fact. It's possible. So you should f f promote reviews. It's public and to mark, use your guests for marketing. All the services, um, you have the problem. It's an experience you can evaluate only if um, the price was um, OK once you've stayed a night there, if the uh, service was good and if the room was clean. And it helps you if you have an asymmetry of information. And if you overcome this, it will certainly pay off. And that is why these review portals, if they're honest, are good. We might discuss this if you like. Um, I, I absolutely disagree. Um, there's another study which was presented, I think, on Friday by the um, FH Worms consumers were asked. We did this three years ago and we repeated the same study um, with the Technical College of Worms, and the result was 90% of customers said the hotel was um, as good or even better. So reviews are working, and it's not just we have um, silly um, customers go look at the website who simply believe that they, they use um, their minds and they are very selective. And sometimes it's what you read between the lines. So if you read it has a nice garden or it's really close to the beach or uh, there are excellent restaurants nearby, and these are the important things you read in reviews. These make the difference. These things um, are important. Or, um, if you read, there's great staff, it's a great breakfast buffet, that makes the difference. And that is why HRS Expedia, name them, take this up. Um, it gives, it adds emotions to all these technical aspects. If people say, I have enjoyed it, because the world has become so anonymous, this whole online world, and it gives people a kick. At Marriott, do you consider this in your pricing strategy? Not necessarily. We have different pricing systems where reviews don't play a role. 
of course we are thinking about it but we have seen of course we also have our own studies the better customer reviews are the higher the conversion on a website no doubt about that and our analysis also shows that the better the reviews the higher the rates or, um, um, or higher rates we can ask, but we have also realized even if customers use an independent third party portal and if we post our own reviews, um, customers don't believe it. And even though it's a third party channel and independent, but as customers say, well, these are all positive reviews and uh, they're all on the married website. It can't be. People think it can't be true. And we think customers um, trust in TripAdvisor reviews, but they don't believe in the same uh, review which they find on our website. So it's not just a great idea to uh, post it. Um, you might um, have a link to a holiday check if you like. Well, you're signing new business, don't you? What might be interesting, if you book a hotel anonymously and you compare rates and your reviews, but your own Facebook page, which gives some insight, which makes everything more human, not the 30th rate, but things you tell yourself about daily life, might make it more, more charming and a bit safer to buy. These are also options which the hotel industry might use. Well, you should. Of course, you should be passionate about it, but I think there's at least one employee who m might be um, enthusiastic about it. To ha you, you could have your own blog which shows the life behind the scenes. These are all the opportunities of the internet. Um, this in addition to transparency, which might make a difference. And then people don't even might ask, why are your 20 euros more expensive if they are nice and if um, the hotel seems to be good? And you might publish stories of customers. We heard or we got a nice letter or a thank you in a room by a customer. These things make the difference, which might create added value and people might go to this hotel. What are the price developments in the U.S. in 2014? Will rates go up? Rates are going up now. Apparently, most hotels, not just Marriott, also other chains, have the so-called P have reached the peak occupancy level after 2007, and we've just published our earning call that Repa will increase by six to seven percent in the U.S. It's quite a bit. Let's come back to websites. Marriott is part of Roomkey, is the partner of Roomkey. We are one of the joint venture partners of Roomkey. There were five partners who founded Roomkey. Marriott is one of these partners. This is an um, alternative to online distribution. to get customers who have not used the joint venture partner website to get these customers in the funnel and to process a booking. It might be that customers didn't book on Marriott.com, but they book on a, another partner website. And Roomkey exists to offer more variety to customers. Um, three hotels in Berlin and 300 on Expedia. Well, there are several reasons. We've, we, it's, it's no secret most customers um, um, go to go on our website don't book there, but they go somewhere else and look for other brands or other options which also happens on other website. Roomkey gives you the opportunity to get this exit traffic to offer an independent solution outside of Marriott of, or any other hotel. And another reason for Roomkey is also to do search engine marketing much more profitable. Berlin, for example, Roomkey is, doesn't play a role in Europe. But let's take Berlin as an example. We have the opportunity 
if you, we buy a word at Google, we can offer three hotels. Um, each other channel can sell four or five hotels, and the efficiency, the profitability of this um, search engine marketing is much larger if you can offer more hotels. And here you can stream marketing spend. It's much more profitable. In the US, it's a player because we haven't heard a lot about RoomKey recently in Europe. It's only a player in the US. And RoomKey is a separate company. We are a joint venture partner. We are on the board of RoomKey. But it's managed separately. Rate parity. Oh, you seem to be annoyed. No, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm getting at something different. M meter search engines. Will they get more customers because there will be lower rate parity? Do customers know that when they started with HRS, um, it was the build was the only um, newspaper, that's tabloid, which reported about it before Christmas, and we didn't hear anything about it. Is this something that customers know about it? Do they say, well, i rather go to Trivago or others to see where I get the best rate for my for what I want to book? Are they more successful if you look at Kayak, for example, stock listed in the US, 70 billion? It's more than Lufthansa, Thomas Cook, British Airways, and others together. Uh, so it's a monster which is approaching. They're doing a great job. They, they had almost been bankrupt. Yeah, but they, they're doing a great job. It was also very intelligent. They create a brand outside of Google. This dependency of uh, Google uh, is a kind of an addiction. It's absurd what we, we are doing. We know it It will, won't end well, but we go there every day. So what they do is very smart. And they offer comparison and additional benefits. So um, customers don't care if there's rate parity or not, but they create transparency, not just with, on the hotel website directly. It will play a larger role when you start. Do you have your own um, pricing, lower pricing? Uh, however, I still hope you're not do this. I might offer my advice. I know the discussion, and I'm really worried. You mean direct interface? to show who has which rate for the same product. And then it's important that you can really compare the services, is breakfast included or not, and also other aspects which create a benefit. You don't have to go through certain websites if you just get it at one website. They're booming. I agree with you. It's um, the Amazonization of the hotel business, and it does not necessarily um, refers to, to hotels, but to the entire value chain in the tourist business, and it will certainly come. We can't close our eyes. Does it make sense to join as a brand or, um, away from OTAs to get involved? Directly, I think that customers don't understand rate parity anyway because there is no rate parity at all. It doesn't have anything to do with pricing on websites. The reason is that a lot of hotels um, don't manage their distribution properly even before the this court ruling in Germany, you just had to go to a meter search engine, and you see a lot of hotels on 15 different shelves with 15 different rates, and customers know this. So I don't think that um, customers really understand rate parity. Search engines or meter search engines create more transparency on the market, which is a good thing. And it gives hotel operators the opportunity to 
approach customers. I, I don't think you should do it through pricing. I didn't say that. Well, you can discuss this later, maybe. But it's important. It's not about OTA um, or brand.com pricing. It's that through the the third party channels, if um, hotels manage this better, then profitability will no longer play role. That's the key problem that at the moment customers are punished if they book directly because they get a better price anywhere else. And that is something the hotel business has to come to terms with. I think for hotels married with a um, proper department, if you're a spy in the net, it's, it's really difficult. Yeah, suddenly you see we rates and you wonder where does this come from? It hasn't really got better. I think it has improved. It's a very slow and difficult road, but if I recall what we found five years ago and what we see today is things have improved. It's not where we would like to see it, which is a pity. And I agree with Mr. Pian. Customers don't know that there's no longer price parity because they didn't even know that there was something like price parity. People book where it's easiest, which brings me back to simple process and what these meter search engines often, at least the ones that they provide a very simple process. I don't need to think, do I get breakfast here or no breakfast? Um, or do I have to pay tourist tax or not? And, um, do I get um, sunrise free of charge? So there's a price and the service and different channels and where it's the cheapest. I it. It's simple, and as I said, uh, and as they get um, more um, customers, and we are f involving ourselves in Shiraz because I also want to this, and it's a nice thing to see how the um, your rates are compared to others. Hopefully, good, and it really helps to m monitor what um, our hotels do. At Marriott, you have a more centralized approach. It's different, of course, but price controlling will become more and more important for marketing because otherwise you will destroy your brand. So Ring Hotel will join Trivago and to say we are also in between to get um, hotels on the website. We would like to get customers to office. Yes, you can book wherever you want, of course. But um, if this simple method is uh, favorable, we want to be part of the game. Yes, it's legitimate. Anybody can use the internet. Everybody should use the internet. And it's important in particular, um, medium-sized enterprises should have more internet skills. We are living in a digital world. If you buy a car, it has internet. And the food industry, DHL, has to bring supermarket online because supermarkets can't do this on their own. We are. We live in a digitized world, and we are even a step further. Forget inter the internet. It's mobile today, and the traffic which we get today comes from mobile. The the traffic ba benefit than ordinary um, traffic of fixed line um, devices is going down. Today it's mobile, and that is where we still, we will see a traffic leap. It will be f become ever more fast, ever faster. Um, what do you do internally? Not having stable of bookings, which are not yet um, in the system. We have a PMS and a CRS in the hotel business. How do they talk to each other? Sometimes they don't. It's not always the case, but in um, medium-sized hotels, this is really the case. Do bookings get in? Um, people who stand in front of the door and book, and then the, um, the guest is there, and I'm still looking for the booking. You should improve here, which will cost money. Money because you have to optimize internally, not just your presentation, external presentation. Well, everything costs money. Um, there's nothing free of charge. But at the end of the day, it won't be that expensive if I'm talking about channel management or touring interfaces, which most we have for most established systems. They cost an investment, a monetary investment, but it um, you can save opportunity costs, but it pays off very quickly. It's a short-term investment, which should be done um, earlier in bigger hotels than in smaller ones, but it's a must for pricing, isn't it, Dr. Friesen? Yes, I think so. 
to know how can I do a forecast if I don't have any information. It's um, a very basic exercise, uh, which you should do in all industries. It has improved in the past, has become more professional, but I think there's still room for improvement. If you look at the development where we are coming from in the 1970s, 1980s, the um, beginning of the yield management in the airline business, I think hotels can learn a lot. It doesn't necessarily have to be so, too compli so complicated that you have um, 10 million of different tariffs per day, which the airline business changes. It does not necessarily should be the case in the hotel business. But by professionalizing it, you can certainly increase your average um, profit. And that should be your target for controlling and for distribution channels, not just um, costs, but also average profit. It's important to see whether it's a hotel chain or a medium-sized hotel. You need to have a system which stores all availabilities and rates, and which should be um, your system for all information. And they're a good solution for medium-sized uh, hotels, which are not that expensive. but. It's key to control your rates, distribution, and to control also the distribution um, pattern of the different distribution channels. So the next step would be to, com to link this with the click data. Of course, you want to know on what customers clicked in the internet, and you want to link it with the booking data. And if you like, the next step might be to link this to CRM, which might be more difficult if you find a customer on the internet, you know, through third channels or third partners, you can do this. You can identify a customer who was at Lufthansa.com and booked a flight from Frankfurt to Paris, and you find this client and generate a dynamic ad. Here are hotels in Paris. These are rates. There are these opportunities and not that expensive nowadays. Of course, you need a strategy, a distribution strategy, absolutely. And we are coming from this world of two systems. We will, P, the PMS, the tr traditional system, will no longer be there. And if, it will rather be planning with strategy, pricing, and everything that is important. Big data will play a role. We see the consumer discussion with NSA, et cetera. But the problem is these big data replication. The logic behind is to have a lot of data and to process them within a second and to send out a response and CM data, with linking to click data, the customer profile if you have, and to show response and not to offer a three or 500 hotels, but five, or to start with pricing and say we have sold a certain limit of bookings. There are a lot of bookings that might be a trade fair or another event which you don't know. We need to raise rates. So there were the targets um, recently. In the Handelsblatt, there was an article that somebody complained that prices were going up at ITB in Berlin. Well, it's market economy, isn't it? But big data will help to reduce complexity of data and to put it into structures and to produce reasonable responses. A lot is available, which makes it so exciting. We are almost at the end of our discussion, shall we allow some questions from the audience? I think it has been very interesting. I think there's a still, still a lot to do in the hotel business, and it's not boring. Are there questions? Now it's your turn. Now people are leaving. The best method to get no questions is to ask if there are questions. Wenn wir lange genug sprechen, dann kommt schon jemand. I think if we wait sufficiently, there's going to be a question. Your planet, I didn't quite get a, a clear impression as to what you think about rate parity. Will, they be, will there be in the <coughs> coming years rate parity and uh, why yes or no? There never has been any rate parity. Mm -hmm. There has been the impression of rate parity, or it has been given that there might be a rate parity, but it has not been there, and now it has been legally dropped, so no. 
I agree. Uh, rate parity has been in an illusion for many, many years, and it would be great if the hotelry, hotelry could get rate parity very soon uh, with all distribution channels. Hmm. Is this good enough? Did, did this answer your question? That's, that's not okay, super. <laughs> that's Noch ein Herr There's another gentleman with a question over there. Uh, I'm Macy Marvel from uh, Genf. Macy Marvel from Geneva in Switzerland. My question regards Google Hotel Finder. What do you think? What do you think about this channel? Google Hotel Finder. Mr. Voller. Well, I've got a very complicated opinion regarding Google. You, you haven't realized. No, I hadn't been aware of that. Problem is, Google has more than 90% of all search uh, requests. And what we're experiencing now is that Google produces no longer any neutral uh, search hits, but an answer. It's like the German uh, watchdog doing a test on winter tires, and the tire that has always won is uh, the tire that uh, the Stiftung Warentest uh, watchdog produces uh, itself. But there was something else. No, um, I used to uh, use the uh, ADAC example, but I'm being careful. No, but you can't uh, ignore Google. However, we do create new dependencies, which become yet another problem. And there is a possibility of a procedure, and there is a discussion there. Um, you do two market tests, and you can see Google's answers even better. But I think if you're a hotel owner and the entire hotel sector, cannot ignore the hotel finder because this will be included in the maps, just like other searches. But whether this is the right uh, channel, and uh, well, I don't know. I warn you against getting from one dependency into the other. If you do not have any balance any longer and you're fully dependent on Google, uh, well, I don't know. Then you need to do everything so as to be represented in, in this uh, channel. You need a uh, plan B. But I think uh, you simply can't ignore the hotel finder. Uh, you had another question over there. With regard to Marriott, do you already have a, a recipe for big data? Do you apply such a plan already in-house, or is it being outsourced? We do have a, a plan, and we administer it in-house. The strategy is the following one. Search engine marketing is geared towards the demand regarding the hotels and uh, towards availability of hotels in real time. It's lead management for search engine marketing. Unfortunately, we have to end our panel discussion. Um, I've had great fun. I hope you as well. It's been highly interesting, really. And I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the trade show. Thank you very much indeed.